um, are going nuts. People are, you, you watch CNBC and it's every other guest. First guest will say, you get ready, hold on to your butts. Earnings are going to go through the roof. It's going to be wild and crazy and beautiful. And then the next guest says, hold on to your butts. Everybody's overestimating this. Um, the economy hasn't improved. Earnings are not going to get better, so on and so on. Well, you check this out here. And so far, the the, the negative uh, earnings folks are winning that debate right now. So Netflix tumbles despite blowing away subscriber estimates as revenues miss, guidance disappoints. So if you remember this, um, Netflix, they had, they started cracking down on passcode sharing for people who want to uh, share a user account. Well, they added, how many did they add? They added millions of subscribers. And even with the new, uh, they, uh, yeah, they added more than 2 million new subscribers. Um, but they still, their revenues are still dropping and their profit margins are getting squeezed as well. Um, so, I mean, did they have increase in revenue? Yeah, sure. But not nearly enough to justify where they are at the moment. So um, they also mentioned that this strike with Hollywood writers and so on uh, could really be uh, uh, detrimental to their stock price. So Netflix is the first one to miss. Then we go to IBM. IBM Q2 earnings beat revenue misses despite cloud demand. Ooh, what the heck just happened? Sorry. Uh, so IBM reported mixed second quarter 2023 results wherein the bottom line beat the estimate, but the top line missed. However, the company witnessed healthy demand for hybrid cloud and AI solutions. Um, so essentially a uh, same thing. Now you guys keep in mind in the role of the stock market, these guys, there are so many various tricks they can pull to make their quarterly earnings look good or look a, tell a certain story. But um, what you can't really, um, well, I guess you can. Uh, you can uh, you can strategically mess with your um, your revenues. Maybe it's uh, um, revenues depending on how you do your accounting. But anyhow, IBM has another miss. And let's see how now that I've clicked on how is their stock today? Hey, they're actually up today. So here. Check this out. Discover, like the credit card you, gosh darn it, I did it again. I keep clicking this. They're down 16% today on a massive miss. Um, let's read this here. Shares in Discover Financial Services tumbled more than 13% in after hours trading on Wednesday after its quarterly earnings fell short of expectations and it announced a share repurchase pause as it investigates incorrect classification of credit card accounts around mid-2007. Um, the company said it's deciding to pause share repurchase during its internal review. It said that around back in 2007, it incorrectly classified certain credit card accounts in the highest merchant blah, blah. All right. So a classification error. Um, but again, a massive miss for them. Unfortunately, they don't give a lot of insight as to why other than just, uh, this, uh, this internal thing, which could, you know what it could, it, it could um, blow up into a, a much bigger problem, but uh, they didn't give too much insight on what are the consumer, how are their consumers and their users doing. Uh, primarily, they're down massively because, how do I get to, there we go, because of this big investigation and share repurchase pausing. Now, if you're going to repurchase your share buyback, that's going to affect your stock price increasing. Let's just check how their financials look here. So if you guys are looking to, as they say, buy the dip, okay, revenues look good. EBITDA looks decent. Hey, free cash flow looks awesome. Earnings per share look like they're going the right direction. Uh, hey, looks like they're paying off a lot of debt and they're building cash. And look at those dividends. Those growing dividends look really good. So actually, you know what, you guys, if this is something that's in your, in your wheelhouse, MasterCard, Visa, Discover, this might actually be something that you'd be interested in um, to buy the dip, as they say. So that's their five-year performance. I guess it's not that great, right? Kind of sideways. Um, but you know what? You're going to have to decide. It's up to you. Um, Tesla. Tesla shareholder update. Again, not great because, well, you know, we're going to go into the details on this one. It's kind of interesting. Tesla beats top and bottom line. They record revenues as their profit margins decline. So they had profit margins that kind of uh, uh, stunk. And let's just have a look at how they're doing right now. They are, okay, so they're getting beat up today because of this. So they have more revenue. They have adjusted earnings that are both increasing. And this is record, a record revenue for Tesla. Um, however, 
they're losing on regulatory credits, those environmentally friendly credits because they're making e um, electric vehicles. The big thing though, is that their um, profit margins are declining um, because of used cars and uh, uh, not just used cars, I shouldn't say that, it's specifically that they're lowering, lowering the price of their cars. Um, so what does that mean? Well, let's just read exactly what Tesla has to say. They say here, in Q2, we produced a record number of vehicles thanks to ongoing, uh, ongoing ramps of our new factories and strong performance in China and Fremont, California. Cybertruck equipment install at Giga Texas is in progress with deliveries remaining on track to start. Yield of our in-house 4,600 cell production line continues to increase and we're building more capacity for uh, production. Uh, let's see, Model Y was the best selling vehicle of any kind in the first half of year in the Europe. Thank you to our European owners. Autonomy at scale is achieved by extremely large real world data set, neutral net training, vehicle hardware, soft vehicle software, all of which we develop in house, which is actually an incredible thing that they do. Very few people do that. It gives them a lot more control over cost and just how the product is made. Um, so that's kind of what they're telling people. Um, let's see here. Okay. So that's about it right now for Tesla earnings. Um, their profit margins are shrinking a bit. But again, if we look, let's go here like we've been doing and let's look at just so you guys can have an idea. I'm not too concerned. It seems like when you look at the numbers here, revenue is exploding, EBITDA is exploding, free cash flow is going the right direction. All of these various data points, especially cash and debt, are looking really good. The one thing that doesn't look good here, shares outstanding. They're diluting shareholders a lot. In fact, in just over 10 years, They've gone from 760 million shares to 3.5 billion shares. So even, even as they are diluting shareholders, um, you can see stock price doesn't seem to care. They're exploding upward. So um, let's continue with earnings here. Um, let me see here. What was I even, why did I even pull this up? So a lot of this demand in AI has been driving those top seven stocks that we've been talking about all day. Uh, the NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, the rest of them. Here's a very interesting development specifically from Taiwan Semiconductor's um, uh, uh, press release they put out, uh, earnings to uh, shareholders. They said, and let me first read this tweet here. Zero Hedge says the AI revolution is so powerful that Taiwan Semiconductor, the world's largest chip maker, which is the sole chip supplier for NVIDIA and the main supplier to Apple, Qualcomm, and AMD, reported its first revenue drop since 2019 and slashed guidance. It now expects full year sales to decline by 10%. So then Zero Hedge quotes them, uh, the uh, chairman of the company. He says, quote, the short-term frenzy about the AI demand definitely cannot extrapolate for the long term. Neither can we predict the near future, meaning next year, how the sudden demand will continue or flatten out. So what in the world, it sounds pretty straightforward to me um, uh, that the, the people in charge here, I mean, one of the head chairman of Taiwan Semi, who's providing all these chips is saying, this is not sustainable. This is not sustainable. Um, with that said, TSM slashes guidance as AI boom fails to deliver. Not only that though, check out this article. This is from uh, a Taiwan Semi. Now, if you guys remember, they're building this massive like small city in Arizona, but they've had to pat, they've had to postpone production and construction because they say that there is a shortage of skilled workers and they're postponing the plant completion until 2025. They say here, we are encountering certain challenges as there is insufficient amount of skilled workers with the specialized expertise required for equipment install in a semiconductor grade facility. That is unreal. We expect the production schedule uh, to uh, process technology to be pushed out to 2025. Um, so, uh, you know, he also says here, it's all about macroeconomics, in fact, Higher inflation and interest rates impact demand in all market segments in every region in the world. China's economic recovery is also slower than we expected. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if that's all the case, and that's not like they just got caught off guard on that, how in the world did this get to this point where they agreed to build such a massive um, small city in Arizona and all that stuff? Well, my friends, 
never underestimate the uh, side effects and the unintended consequences of government spending. That was all because of the Biden administration's move to bolster America's supply chain for next generation computer chips by increasing domestic production through the Chips and Science Act. Now, you know, of all the things that we can complain about government, and there's plenty of them, and even though most of us hate this crazy spending, this one at least was decent in the sense that uh, that the CHIPS Act just th literally threw money at these tech companies to come and build these um, factories in America. There are plenty of other factories across the country being built. This just happens to be the biggest one. And it looks like that uh, we threw a little too much money at the um, at the idea, and we just do not. We simply do not have, like I said, they don't. They can't find enough skilled workers to make this thing happen. Um, but regardless, it will get it will get finished. So, Taiwan Semiconductor. Let's have a look at TSM today. Down four and a half percent on this news. Um, and just for those of you who'd like to see kind of what how TSM looks as a company, very attractive. Again, revenue going up, EBITDA going up, free cash flow, net income, earnings per share. Again, ton of cash on hand. Dividends, eh, not so great. Shares, okay, at least they're not diluting. But uh, great, great return on capital here. What's that, 27, 28% essentially. Um, I will say there's one thing you need to know. Remember we did we talked about this a couple, uh, a couple of episodes ago. Warren Buffett's Berkshire sells 100% of stake in Taiwan Semi. And if you remember, there was a uh, there was an interview where Warren Buffett was essentially caught off guard. The interviewer asked, okay, so tell me, why did you sell 100% of your Taiwan without even telling anybody or anything? Usually you don't do that. And the guy just completely starts uh, blah, 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 stuttering and he doesn't know what to say. And then he kind of uh, fumbles a couple sentences out where he goes, oh, well, you know, uh, China and Taiwan and you never know what geopolitics is going to have in store. And so anyhow, um, if those of you who want to buy some more Taiwan, you might just be patient right now. Uh, if Warren Buffett knows something, uh, you may just be patient. So anyhow, 